Hello, welcome back YouTube. Thanks for joining me again for this is going to be part four of the Industries DLC tutorial. This one's going to get math heavy, so hopefully you have your, your math hat on. And we're going to go into um, the best assets, I guess you could say, the most efficient assets to use in your DLC. And, you know, if you're going for efficiency, making the most money possible, this would be the way to go. If, um, you know, you, you want to have a certain look, you know, you're going more for aesthetics, but well, maybe you can use some of this and um, have, or give you, this will give you a, a way to figure out, you know, kind of the trade off that you're making, so to speak. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about extractors. So the extractors, in every case, let me think about that, make sure my statement's correct. Yes, in every case, the small extractor is the most efficient. I'm going to go through examples. So we'll look at this oil. So the, the small oil pump. Let me go, go here. It's not oil, this is oil. This is how you can figure out the numbers. So you see the small oil pump, it makes 48 barrels per week and it costs $24 per week. If you take 48, 48 divided by 24 and you get two, do, two tons, or two barrels, we'll say. Two barrels per week per dollar is what you get, okay? But then if you look at, say, the large pump, large drill here, that's 96 barrels per week for $80 per week. So if you take 96 and divide that by 80, you get 1.2 barrels per week per dollar. So it's about half as efficient, we'll say. The other one you're getting two barrels per week per dollar this one you're getting 1.2 they're not you know of course you multiply this by putting down i don't know because you don't have the need you know you don't have to put as many large ones down if you're using that versus the small ones but you, you if you're p producing you know a thousand barrels a week you can kind of figure out how much money you're going to be spending more roughly a thousand dollars a week more <laughs> right if one's a, a dollar one the other one's two dollars two uh two tons or two barrels once one you're probably spending you know twice as much okay let's look at farming oh i guess i don't really need to move because we're in the menu farming 48 tons for 12 dollars that's four tons per dollar if you look at the large crop that's 112 tons per week for 40 dollars a week that's 2.8 tons. So you, you go from four tons per week to 2.8. And we can look at the extractors. Actually, let's look at the storage. So in the storage case, it's almost always better. Mm, it is always better. It's always more cost effective, we'll say. Not necessarily better, but most cost effective to use the small storage. So we'll look at this one. Well, we don't have to click on them. They're in the menu. So we'll go find the small one. Just this guy here. This is the second step in the process. The storage unit. A small crude makes 3,000, or stores, 300,000 units of stuff. Barrels, oil, whatever it is. For $32 a week. That's 9,375 units per dollar. Now, the oil, the crude oil one, this guy here, he stores 500,000 units per week, or 500,000 units, we'll say, at $96 per week. That's 5,208 units per week per dollar. So it's like half. So the small ones basically stores twice as much for the same amount of money, we'll say. And we'll go ahead and look at forestry again. I just did for forestry and oil. You can, of course, expand this to ore and, and or sorry, not forestry, farming and oil. You can expand this to the other two if you want, but it's just, you, or you just trust me, it's the same. So the small grain silo is 300,000 units for $16 a week at 18,750 units per dollar. Okay. The large grain silo, which stores the most, is six six hundred thousand at sixty four dollars a week, 
and that's 9,375 units per dollar. So it's about half. So roughly two of these is it you can put down two of these no yeah two of these for the same cost as one of these but get twice as much storage in a sense for the cost that makes sense hopefully it does and then we'll look at processors so like i said this episode this tutorial part is all about the math so i hope you like math because <laughs> that's what we're doing you can look at uh, we'll do, we'll do oil again. So processors are going to be things like the plants, right? So, like this guy here, the petrochemical plant. This guy costs uh, three hundred twenty dollars a week, and he makes forty tons of uh, plastic. And this one you do the opposite. So this one, the smaller the number, the better, because you're taking the, the the weekly costs and dividing it by the the, the units, the tons. So the smaller, like I said, the better. And this guy make, takes eight dollars to make one ton. So eight dollars per ton. Then if you look at this guy here. Oh, I should have mentioned. So the processors, in every case but farming. So it's important, every case but farming, the bigger processor is the better processor. So the nap, NAPTA, NAPTA cracker is better than the petrochemical, the, um, this guy here, the waste oil refinery, is better than the oil sludge guy here. Um, the same thing with like the, the saw mill and like the other and the engineered building. I think it's called engineered something. The engineered is better. The pellet plant or whatever it's called in forestry is better than the biomass one, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the extractors. This guy here. The rotary kiln is better than the grinding mill. The, the fiberglass is better than the glass in terms of efficiency. So it's weird. The extractors are the opposite. The storage is the opposite, where the smaller one is actually the more efficient one. On the processing side, the bigger one, the, the next level up one, if you want to say, is the more efficient one. Except, the one exception of farming. I don't know why they decided to do that. <laughs> Make three the same and whatnot. Uh, I don't know, maybe they fell off their chair that day. And the numbers got turned upside down. Who knows? But that's uh, how it works. And we're going to go, um, I have the farming ones here. So we'll go through the farming ones and then we'll go through the oil ones. So, like I said, the Petro plant, $8 a ton. The NAFTA plant, just here. I think it's this one, right? Nah, this one. It's 480 hours a week for 80 tons. So we take 480 I'm down here and divide it by 80. It's six dollars a ton instead of eight. I'll put these numbers up on the screen. Hopefully they're up on the screen so you can see them. Sometimes it's easier to see it than to hear. But it's different for farming. So we look at like the pasture. It's, 20, it's 40 hours a week for 24 tons. That's a one a dollar, basically a dollar seventy, dollar sixty-seven per ton, for the cost. But then when you go to the large one, it's one sixty over fifty-six. It's two eighty-seven a ton. So it's twice as much, a little bit, a little bit less than twice as much. Expensive. Costs twice as much to operate the large animal per ton than the small. And then these these other ones are even worse. So I didn't even calculate them. Like the slaughter mill and all that stuff. Because they all pr produce animal products as well. Uh, do what you can, and, and mix and match just what you want. It doesn't mean you have to put down all the small crops, or like I I did over here, or all the small oil pumps. Just you know, you can mix and match. Just keep in mind that you know, as you go up on the on the extractor side, you're getting less and less efficient, so it's costing you more and more to run the DLC. And as you stick with, I guess, the older processing units, minus the farming, you're spending more money then you kind of, I don't want to say you need to, but you're just being a little less efficient there. And then of course with the farming, if you're using the larger stuff like the, the solar houses and all that stuff, well, you know, it's just a little, it's a little less efficient. But if you you want to have a look of a couple of those buildings, because then maybe you want to just put down one solar house, one milk thing, and, and then do the rest like the pastures, you know, something like that. That would be totally fine. I mean, it's your city, you're the mayor. Of course, you do what you, you want to do and go for the look you're, you're going for. I'm just trying to give you the title of the, of the, the show, so to speak, 
was the optimizing, the math behind, right? So this is just a, this is what we're talking about here. You know, what are the best a assets in terms of like cost benefit analysis or terms of, you know, how much you're getting per ton or, or per unit of thing you're making or how much it's costing you to do that. So hopefully that arms you with some knowledge so you can help make some decisions, but ultimately you know, mix and match and do what, do what you think is the best for your city. The larger the warehouse, the better, we'll say. The warehouse yard has a hundred can store a hundred thousand units for sixty four hours a week. When you take a hundred thousand divided by sixty four, you get fifteen basically fifteen hundred units per dollar. However, the large warehouse is seven hundred fifty thousand of units at two hundred forty a week, and that gives you three thousand. But basically about 3,100 units per week. So it's almost, once again, almost double. Or they double the units for the dollar. So actually the large warehouses are better. Are better to, so the larger ones are better to put down than the smaller ones, we'll say. So it's the opposite of the other storage units. So don't be afraid to... The problem is, of course, they take up a huge amount of space. The large ones. So you need the area. I tend to use the medium ones. Because they're pretty efficient and they don't take up nowhere as near as much space as the large and you can build your whole entire industries dlc with the medium which is what i did here and it will operate just fine all right last last thing on this one here i think is the unique warehouses the unique factories sorry so the fat math behind the unique factories i just looked at like the modular house this is one but they're all about the same in terms of how it works so operating at 50 percent you, you get actually not half but I don't want to say double a full 100% reduction in, in value from 100% it's kind of weird it's not like 50% when I did the math it's going going from 50 to 100% you actually gain 100% more stuff <laughs> I don't, you, you, on, a, on at least on the modular warehouse you go from making 5400 hours to 10,800 hours and the ratio between the um how much money you make versus how much money it costs actually stays the same. It was 26% all the way through. And then when I looked at it at 150%, it, it did go up 50%. So it went from 10, about almost 1,100 hours, or sorry, 11,000 hours of what you're, you're making per unit, or to say per amount of tonnage it produced to 16,000. So where we went from five to 10, then we went to, from 10 to 16, basically. And then the last thing, uh, we'll, we'll go over that in expanding, which is kind of like, which things do you want to, if you have more stuff than you need, where do you want that more stuff to be? Do you want to produce more raw material, produce more processed material, or more unique warehouse material? That'll be like in the next one, just a sneak peek, I suppose. So we'll go over that stuff. And so the next one will be all about expanding the industry, so you'll see kind of some some tips on how to expand your industry DLC do it so that you don't blow your industry DLC up and of course if you want to go back to the previous ones the first one was all about the assets you know which assets do what and how to read the numbers the second one was all about location the third one was all about like how do you get it started how do you build it without blowing it up in the beginning and then set yourself off in, in, in a bad spot uh, right, right at the beginning and then, of course, this one was more about the mathematics the optimization uh, behind the industry DLC. So I hope these are helpful. I uh, look forward to making the next one. And um, thank you very much. Have a good day. And as always, happy building.